Ah, there you are. Can we talk? I need a favor, and you strike me as the charitable type. Touchy, touchy. I'll get right to it. I need some gold. Care to help a fellow out? Hard times all around, then. Well, it was worth a shot. Guess that debt collector traveled all the way to Garrett Mock for nothing. If I were you, I'd feel bad about leaving the poor guy hanging like that, but it is what it is. No, it's a lose-lose. I owe the church, too. That means any work I do here, they take a cut. The only way to escape my financial burden is to get clear out of Fodlin. Oh, I had... didn't mean to bring you down. No, it's just joking, yeah? We all have to decide where we belong and then fight for it. Can't let your wallet control your fate. If money was all I cared about, I never would have walked away from inheriting a baron's house. Uh, it's nothing. It was a minor house in the east of the Alliance. I like to say I stepped aside for the good of the house. Has a nicer ring to it than saying I just wasn't cut out for the gig. Or that I lacked the right temperament. My distinguished little bro took my place. Fact is, he's a much better man for the job. Don't go feeling sorry for me now. I didn't mind one bit. Truth is, I'd have been miserable in that life. Having that title was nothing but fuss. Fuss is the worst. This way of life suits me much better. And you? You showing up at Garrick Mock was a coincidence wrapped in happenstance. Your pops was a renowned mercenary leader. It can be safely assumed you'll follow in his footsteps. But don't you ever feel like that life was decided for you? Better start pondering that one real quick, pal. Why keep breathing if your life isn't your own, yeah? Well, there's a decided lack of gold here, so I'll be off now. You think on what I said. Stubborn little... That's it! Nighty night, sleepyhead! Whew. Guess that's it! Can't let lowlifes like you into Garrick Mock. Nobody likes troublemakers. Trust me. What the... Oh, it's you. Don't sneak up on people. It's rude. But we can discuss your lacking manners another time. Why are you here? You following me, pal? Guess I can't fault you for that. Since you seem to have been mopping up enemies without me knowing it. She really thinks I'm gonna try to reclaim my title. <laughs> she clearly doesn't know me too well. Yet she keeps sending fools my way like the stubborn shrew she is. That's my stepmother for you. Shocking. Remember when I told you my little bro inherited House Albrecht after I left? Well, he's my half-bro. And his mother is... devoted, to say the least. She'd do anything for him. Sadly, he had the nerve to be born without a crest. And here I stand with a rare one swimming in my veins. She's convinced I'll return one day to take back my title by force. Completely off a rocker, that one. Nah, not worth the effort. It's best for everyone that I take the brunt of her malice. I can handle it just fine. If I wasn't around, she'd shift her beady gaze to my dad. Maybe even to my mom, who fled the house a while back. Or maybe my little bro would become the target of her good intentions. Can't allow that to happen. And that's the bottom line. Long story short, you should keep your distance from me. If that assassin's dagger took you out, everyone here would fall to pieces. How would I explain that? That's... Uh, that's a big talk, pal. So, you'll protect me too, will ya? To think someone who can keep up with the exalted king of grappling would say such a swell thing. I'm a betting man, so I'll take the bait. Let's see if you really intend to protect me. Or if those were just pretty words.
I see. By any means necessary, then. Before the war's end. I'm covered, but just to be safe, I need you to check on my mother and Kupala. <sighs> Still following me, huh? We have got to work on those manners, pal. Unless you really meant that bit about protecting me. A spy. I pay him money I don't have to monitor my stepmother, just in case something happens to me. Whether I'm above the dirt or below it, it's on me to protect my mom and her home, Kupala. No doubt about it. She's been honing her crazy plans lately. All because I've taken to fighting at your side. She thinks I'm making a name for myself before my glorious return to House Albrecht. Being delusional is her sport. There's little advantage to her going after my mom, but she's unpredictable. Gotta stay vigilant. Guess I haven't talked about her. After her and my pop split, she returned home. Where she's from... It's kind of an odd place. You know the folks who live in the mountains of the Alliance? <laughs> Guessing that's a no. Few do. Imagine a place with no influence to speak of. Nestled in the mountains on the Almiran border. That's Kupala. Well, they're not mountain goats. And it's not like they never interact with the Lords of the Alliance. They're incredibly isolated, though. Even their trade relations are remarkably limited. Doubt that'll change. The land lacks resources worth fighting over. Probably for the best, honestly. Oh, but back to my mom. She was different. An exception to the rule in Kupala. She left the mountains, was rescued by my dad, and fell madly in love with him. That goddess of yours is one cruel minx. So if that's the destiny she gave him, wouldn't surprise me a bit. My birth helped matters, but only a little. House Albrecht just wasn't where she belonged. My dad was in a tough spot. He was obligated to marry a fellow noble and produce a fitting heir. Nobody'd want to live out their days where they're utterly unwelcome. So my mom returned to Kupala. Then it happened. I was enrolled in the Officers Academy at Garrick Mach, and everything changed. During my enrollment examination, they discovered that I bear the major crest of Chevalier. My dad decided to resist his family's wishes and make me the head of the house after I graduated. Thing is, the truth of my special crest was kept a secret, by decree of the church. He couldn't tell anyone about my prized bloodline, so I was forced to step down as the legitimate heir. It was for the best. My crest was inherited from mountain folk who prefer to keep to themselves. Imagine what would happen to Kupala if it got out. We both know it would destroy their way of life. Too true. I'm guessing the church thought my crest would cause trouble in Fodlan. But don't get me wrong. No matter what life's thrown at me, I'm no victim. Like I've said, I prefer it this way. I've gotta be free. Even if things were different, I'd still choose this life. But I can't let my mother and her people pay the price for keeping peace in Fodlan. Wouldn't be right. All I can do is make a name for myself in battle and secure enough power to protect them. Failure isn't an option. Ah, there you are. Can we talk? I need a favor, and you strike me as the charitable type. Receptive, aren't you? I know I shouldn't ask, but I need some gold. Hard times all around, then. Well, it was worth a shot. Guess that debt collector traveled all the way to Garrick Mach for nothing. If I were you, I'd feel bad about leaving the poor guy hanging like that, but it is what it is. No, it's a lose-lose. I owe the church, too. That means any work I do here, they take a cut. The only way to escape my financial burden is to get clear out of Fodlin. Oh. 
cold as ice. You know, it's just joking, yeah? We all have to decide where we belong and then fight for it. Can't let your wallet control your fate. If money was all I cared about, I never would have walked away from inheriting a baron's house. I hear that a lot. Still, it's true. I was the head of a minor house in the east of the Alliance. I like to say I stepped aside for the good of the house. Has a nicer ring to it than saying I just wasn't cut out for the gig. Or that I lacked the right temperament. My distinguished little bro took my place. Fact is, he's a much better man for the job. Don't go feeling sorry for me now. I didn't mind one bit. Truth is, I'd have been miserable in that life. Having that title was nothing but fuss. Fuss is the worst. This way of life suits me much better. And you? You showing up at Garrick Mock was a coincidence wrapped in happenstance. Your pops was a renowned mercenary leader. It can be safely assumed you'll follow in his footsteps. But don't you ever feel like that life was decided for you? I know. And I suggest you start choosing your fate instead of just letting it happen. Why keep breathing if your life isn't your own, yeah? Well, there's a decided lack of gold here, so I'll be off now. You think on what I said. Stubborn little... That's it! Nighty night, sleepyhead! Whew. Guess that's it! Can't let lowlifes like you into Garrick Mock. Nobody likes troublemakers. Trust me. What the... Oh, it's you. Don't sneak up on people. It's rude. But we can discuss your lacking manners another time. Why are you here? You following me, pal? Guess I can't fault you for that. Since you seem to have been mopping up enemies without me knowing it. She really thinks I'm gonna try to reclaim my title. <laughs> she clearly doesn't know me too well. Yet she keeps sending fools my way like the stubborn shrew she is. That's my stepmother for you. Shocking. Remember when I told you my little bro inherited House Albrecht after I left? Well, he's my half-bro. And his mother is... devoted, to say the least. She'd do anything for him. Sadly, he had the nerve to be born without a crest. And here I stand with a rare one swimming in my veins. She's convinced I'll return one day to take back my title by force. Completely off her rocker, that one. <laughs> if only that were humanly possible. Besides, I refuse to concede any more than I already have. It's best for everyone that I take the brunt of her malice. I can handle it just fine. If I wasn't around, she'd shift her beady gaze to my dad. Maybe even to my mom who fled the house a while back. Or maybe my little bro would become the target of her good intentions. Can't allow that to happen. And that's the bottom line. Long story short, you should keep your distance from me. If that assassin's dagger took you out, everyone here would fall to pieces. How would I explain that? That's... Uh, that's a big talk, pal. So, you'll protect me too, will you? To think someone who can keep up with the exalted king of grappling would say such a swell thing. I'm a betting man, so I'll take the bait. Let's see if you really intend to protect me. Or if those were just pretty words. I see. By any means necessary, then. Before the war's end. I'm covered, but just to be safe, I need you to check on my mother and Kupala. <sighs> Still following me, huh? We have got to work on those manners, pal. Unless you really meant that bit about protecting me. That's where my mom was born and raised. I pay a spy money I don't have to keep an eye on the place. 
whether I'm above the dirt or below it. It's up to me to make sure my stepmother can't get to my mom. No doubt about it. She's been honing her crazy plans lately. All because I've taken to fighting at your side. She thinks I'm making a name for myself before my glorious return to House Albrecht. Being delusional is her sport. There's little advantage to her going after my mom, but she's unpredictable. Gotta stay vigilant. Guess I haven't talked about her. After her and my pop split, she returned home. Where she's from... It's kind of an odd place. You know the folks who live in the mountains of the Alliance? <laughs> Guessing that's a no. Few do. Imagine a place with no influence to speak of. Nestled in the mountains on the Almiran border. That's Kupala. Well, they're not mountain goats. And it's not like they never interact with the Lords of the Alliance. They're incredibly isolated, though. Even their trade relations are remarkably limited. Doubt that'll change. The land lacks resources worth fighting over. Probably for the best, honestly. Oh, but back to my mom. She was different. An exception to the rule in Kupala. She left the mountains, was rescued by my dad, and fell madly in love with him. Ah, the one million bullion question. Of course not, he's a noble. She isn't. Acceptance was never in the cards. My birth helped matters, but only a little. House Albrecht just wasn't where she belonged. My dad was in a tough spot. He was obligated to marry a fellow noble and produce a fitting heir. Nobody'd want to live out their days where they're utterly unwelcome. So my mom returned to Kupala. Then it happened. I was enrolled in the Officers Academy at Garrick Mach, and everything changed. During my enrollment examination, they discovered that I bear the major crest of Chevalier. My dad decided to resist his family's wishes and make me the head of the house after I graduated. Thing is, the truth of my special crest was kept a secret by decree of the church. He couldn't tell anyone about my prized bloodline, so I was forced to step down as the legitimate heir. It was for the best. My crest was inherited from mountain folk who prefer to keep to themselves. Imagine what would happen to Kupala if it got out. We both know it would destroy their way of life. Too true. I'm guessing the church thought my crest would cause trouble in Fodlan. But don't get me wrong. No matter what life's thrown at me, I'm no victim. Like I've said, I prefer it this way. I've gotta be free. Even if things were different, I'd still choose this life. But I can't let my mother and her people pay the price for keeping peace in Fodlan. Wouldn't be right. All I can do is make a name for myself in battle and secure enough power to protect them. Failure isn't an option. We need to talk, now. You did it for me, didn't you? Without even taking credit for it. Admit it, pal. You ordered the church to protect the people of Kupala. Because of you, those mountains will be considered church turf, and the Eastern Church will be restored. Sure, sure. But you know, saving those folks was my gig, not yours. Now that the war's over, I... <laughs> I'll just spit it out. I was starting to get excited about fighting that fight. Guess you could say I was disappointed to find you'd beaten me to the punch. But what matters is results, so... Thank you. There. I said it. Won't say it again. There's still a lot to figure out. The road ahead won't be easy. But this was a giant leap forward. Right. There's, uh... One more... Thing I need to get off my chest. <sighs> I'm a mess. I wasn't planning on doing this just yet, but you forced my hand. I was gonna wait until I had figured out a way to ensure Kupala's safety first. Guess that excuse is out the window. So now, it's time to take the biggest gamble of my life. I prepared
prepared for the worst. Expecting it, really. You, and uh, uh, I, and... Marry me, pal! Look, I know it's a big ask. I'm beefy, but that aside, I'm not the most eligible bachelor on the block. But I promise to become... better. Not so selfish and careless. I want to support you, make you happy. The life I live makes me comfortable, but... Comfort be damned! I need you by my side. Always. If I'm not good enough now, just give me time. A year, maybe. Two years. Five tops. You do? I knew it! That seals the deal, then, yeah? Let's get hitched right away. I know a guy. Couldn't have said it better myself. Guess a lavish party is in order now. We have a lot to do. Ah, uh, speaking of lavish... I know, I need to sort out my finances. We'll need a house and all that good stuff. Hey, maybe we can just shack up here at the monastery. What do you think? <clears throat> no need to decide now, my love. Let's just focus on this being happy business. The rest will work itself out. It feels like a lifetime ago. But remember when you told me you'd protect me? At the time, I had no idea how to take it. I wasn't sure I could bear letting someone else look after me. I was sure that in the end, I'd be the one protecting you. That I'd be the strong one. That's how it's always been for me. Guess I was wrong. Huh. Suppose so. In the end, we protected each other. To join our strength. To look after you. And be brave enough to let you look after me. That's what marriage is all about, right? Being with you is so natural, it must be fate. But, you know, if fate were a thing. <laughs> that is. From now on, we'll keep looking out for each other. You can bet on it. Hey there, Claude. Where are you headed? If you need some extra muscle, count me in. No thanks. Not much need for heightened security at the monastery. Well, most of the time, anyway. Ish, I can take a hint. I'm just trying to help you out. The way I see it, can't do better than cozying up to the Claude von Regan, future leader of the Alliance. You can get as cozy as you like, but I don't think that'll lower the price on your head. Couldn't hurt. People trust you. They trust the folks you run with. I could use a little trust in my life. So you're hoping this newfound trust will trick more people into lending you money? Yeah, count me out. You know, fighting debt with debt won't work, right? <sighs> Just as well. If you mess up leading the Alliance, their plan's a bust anyway. So count me out, pal. By the way, Claude, are you really the heir of House Regan? Yes? That's my current understanding, anyway. Why do you ask? I've never heard any talk of the last Duke Regan leaving a son behind when he died in that accident. Duke Oswald the Old. Your father? Tall tale if you ask me. And if that's not the case, then who exactly did you get your Regan blood from? Look at you figuring things out all by yourself. Sorry to say the true story isn't all that interesting. I was born to an offshoot of House Regan. When my crest manifested, I was accepted into the ruling bloodline. That's all there is to it. Nice try, but I'm not buying it. House Regan produces dukes and leads the whole of the Alliance. Not having an heir is a matter of life and death. Any relative with a crest would be accepted immediately. But no one even knew you existed until fairly recently. It's fishy, Claude. Remarkably fishy. I think I've finally figured you out. You're working for Lawrence, aren't you? Here's what I really can't work out. Duke Oswald's only daughter, Tiana? Whatever happened to her? I met her a few times when I was a kid. She was a great lady. A real looker, too, let me tell ya. I see your mind was just as pure when you were a kid as it is now. How'd you even cross paths with her? As the legitimate heir of a minor noble house, I got a pretty decent glimpse into high society. Lady Tiana was something special. The stuff of dreams, really. 
and one day she just vanished. Poof. Gone. I'll never forget hearing about it. Wow. So you've had a particular interest in older women since way back when. Sorry, go on. When my old man told me I cried buckets, even Holst lost it. Holst? As in Holst the Indomitable Alliance General? Huh. I never knew that. Yeah. And after a while, I heard a strange rumor. Some say Lady Tiana left to live in a far-off land. Once I remembered that, the rest fell into place. Right. Say, have you considered minding your own business? Isn't that enough of a handful as it is? If you want to have a real discussion sometime, bring me facts. Not a bunch of tired gossip. Deal? Anyway, Teach is waiting for me at the training ground, so I better get going. Uh, nice try, Claude, but I'm on to you. Hey, Claude. Care to pick up where we left off? I got some time to kill. You'll have to kill time on your own, I'm afraid. My calendar's full at the moment. Ah, uh, don't be like that. You're not afraid I'm gonna expose your true identity, are you? I would never. Besides, my own bloodline isn't so lofty that I can get away with something like that. I bet your father would just love to hear you say that. And the Albrecht family is from a distinguished noble house, so I'm not sure what you mean. Not as distinguished as you would think. And my mom wasn't born a noble. Ah, the plot thickens. So, your mother was a commoner then? In a sense, but it's complicated. Listen up. And I'll tell you a little story. You know Kupala, yeah? Those folks have been living in the mountains of Fodlan's throat for ages. I know it well. Tales of that place were carried on the wind to where I grew up. Here's my favorite. In a land surrounded by tall mountains, untouched by civilization, lies a hidden village. The people who live there, the mystical Kupala tribe. They say that an ancient and powerful bloodline runs through their veins to this very day. Don't try to find them, people say, or you're liable to get hexed. Or so the tale goes. That part was probably added to spice up the story a bit, but even so, they're certainly a mysterious lot. <laughs> they don't leave their homeland too often, so it's only natural that strange rumors would arise. And your mother, is she really some kind of Kupala princess or something? Not a princess, but she was born and raised there. She left, got lost, and was rescued by my dad. Ah. Uh, he fell head over heels for her. Made her his wife. That's when her troubles really started. Did your father tell anyone where she was from? Of course not. But it didn't matter. She was still a stranger of questionable lineage. The family treated her horribly. That eventually led to them splitting up and my dad remarrying. That's not an uncommon circumstance for a noble house. Where is she now? With nowhere else to turn, she went back to Kupala, even though my pops tried to convince her to stay. I'm guessing you two left for much the same reason. Too hard to put up with the foul treatment, right? That's part of it. If my mom had been Fodlin nobility, my life would have been very different. So, what do you think? Did I drum up some empathy? After all, half of your blood comes from... I hear you, Balthus. Can't say I don't empathize, though our circumstances are pretty different. So you admit it then. <laughs> I knew I was right about you. My instincts are second to none. Your instincts, right. Look, if it makes you happy, you just go on believing whatever you want. I'll do just that. Say, Claude, it'd be a shame if your true identity was exposed, yeah? Real shame. I'm thinking you better... set up a meeting between me and your mom. She was my first crush, after all. I had it bad for her back in the day. I'm still haunted by the fact that I never had the chance to tell her. That's... bothersome. And that aside, you do know that time didn't exactly stop for her, right? Not a problem, pal. Age is beauty. Balthus, you and I are of like minds, so I'd like to get your opinion on something. 
Oh, is this about the age thing? As a rule, so long as she's younger than my own mother, it's fair game, pal. Noted, but that's not what I wanted to talk about. Ever, really. Do you remember what I said about the first thing we need to accomplish in this war? That bit about busting open the lid that keeps the people of Fodlin from the rest of the world? That's right. I'd like to know your thoughts on the matter. Okay. Well, everyone seemed to eat it up, so I'm fine with it too. Certainly not against it. In a world like that, my mom wouldn't have to fear what others think of her. But it all hinges on if you can shape reality into the vision you have in mind. That's no small task. Hmm. I had a feeling you'd say something like that. Please, go on. I'm all for mixing up different ways of life and bloodlines. But who knows what it'll really mean for Fodlin. We'll be free from things that previously bound us. Walls will crumble. Things will change. Drastically. At the same time, the world we've defended for years could easily become unrecognizable. Everything we've built up until now could fall to ash. Hard to say how it'll all shake out. All we can do is wait and see. Maybe all will end well. Or maybe not. All I want is for everyone to accept each other. That's the ideal I'm striving for. It's deceptively simple when you think about it. Look, if getting exactly what you wanted was easy, I'd be drowning in gold. Don't get caught up in the stakes. You just have to throw the dice and see where they fall. Good advice. That's all we can ever do, really. I just have to do my best and prepare for the worst. You got it. I can't help with funding, obviously, but you have my support. Speaking of funds, you're not planning to sell the secrets of my origins for a quick payoff, right? There are people with deep pockets who'd love to see me fall. They'd pay well for information like that. <laughs> Don't worry, Claude, I wouldn't sell out a friend. Not even for a small fortune. Most likely. Yeah, that's not worrisome at all. <laughs> I was just kidding. After all, I have that promise to look forward to. You won't let me down, right? Oh, of course not. And that promise was... what exactly? About hooking me up with your mom. After we bust open that lid, of course. Uh, of course. Uh, age difference aside, you know she's married, right? I'm not a loon, Claude. I'm not trying to marry her. I just want some closure with my childhood crush. Is that a fact? Well... It'll be interesting to see whether my father can kill you before my mother beats him to it. Ugh, training was exhausting today. I need some quick energy. Aha! Perfect time for my favorite candy! I won't make it back to my room without this sweet, sweet energy. And no one's around. So... Look here. It's the little lady of House Ordelia. Just back from training, yeah? You're unstoppable. <laughs> Not feeling chatty, I see. Something to do with those puffy cheeks? Got a cavity brewing or what? I definitely don't! So bad you can't even speak properly, poor thing. It's okay, I know a guy. He'll have that rotten tooth out in no time. No need! Yep, best in the business. Uses special tools and everything. Door and a string or some such. <laughs> no, no! Thank you! Oh, you just had food in your mouth. You could have told me that a lot sooner, you know. Wow! Placing the blame on me? What a piece of work! But, uh, hey, don't tell anyone. That you were walking around with acorn-stuffed cheeks like some kind of overzealous squirrel? Ugh! It wasn't acorns! It was candy! Even still, I don't plan on telling anyone a hungry girl ate some food. Not much of a story, really. You don't get it. If people think I'm gnawing on candy, they'll think I'm nothing more than a child. That effect. I'd say it's downright prudent to fortify yourself any chance you get. Mature, even. Wait, what? Nothing is certain in life, not even your next meal. You never know when you'll be taken into custody and have to go without food and drink for a while. 
Just what kind of a world do you inhabit, mister? The real world, little lady. My life is a collection of getting into trouble, getting caught, and getting free. One time, I was actually rescued by your parents. Bet you didn't know that, huh? They... rescued you? Too true. I owe them for that. I... Ah! I forgot I'm actually in a rush. I gotta run. Enjoy your secret candy, pal. Mother and father rescued that guy? But when would that have happened? Balthus, do you have a moment? Well, well. It's the little lady of House Ordelia. What can I do for you? You piqued my interest when you spoke about my parents coming to your rescue. Oh, right. Forgot I let that slip. After I fled my home, I became something of a vagrant. Getting into fights. Borrowing money I couldn't pay back. The works. Oh, I know all about it. You were quite the vagabond. Wherever I went, I was treated like trash. Securing enough food to live on got harder and harder. It became clear that I wasn't welcome in Alliance territory. So, I decided to head over to the Empire. My big mistake was stopping by the Great Bridge of Murden on the way. Just my luck, some jerk of a minor lord north of the bridge was on a hunt for the bounty on my head. Oh, that's awful. Would have been fine if I'd been alone, but innocent folks were around. Didn't want to endanger them. That's when I turned tail. I ran until I couldn't run another step, and found myself in Ordelia territory. I knew Count Ordelia from when I was still with my family's house, so it seemed like a decent option. I was hoping our history would be enough to secure a place of sanctuary, but no such luck. They refused to take you in? Yeah. I could tell there was some reason behind it. But they told me to get out as fast as I could. Ah, I imagine it was when the Empire was meddling with my family. We lived in shackles back then. Makes sense. Still, I'm grateful. They gave me food and distracted the Empire's cronies so I could escape. I was half dead from starvation, so that meal saved my life. No joke. Your family's the real deal. Just imagine what the Empire would have done to me. I can tell you it wouldn't have been pretty. I have no doubts. We weren't allowed contact with anyone from the outside. It was strictly forbidden. I see. Well, that's when I vowed to find a way to repay them. One day I'll do just that. And when do you intend to carry out this vow of yours? In due honesty, I don't see you as someone capable of carrying out vows right now, or even keeping your things together. <laughs> Can't argue with that. It'll take me a while to repay that debt, but I will. Just you wait and see. Little Lysithia. These ears miss nothing, you know. What are you on about this time? Is it true that Count Ordelia plans to relinquish his title eventually? Yes, but why are you asking? I approve, that's all. Throwing off the shackles of nobility to live freely, it's a beautiful thing. I would ask that you refrain from painting them with the same brushstrokes that you so liberally paint yourself with. My mother and father will carry on with all the associated duties befitting of nobles. Only after that will they retire. Got it. And that's completely different from someone like me who tapped out of the nobility game, right? Your parents are exemplary nobles, that's for sure. I respect that you support them as much as you do. Would you just stop? You're embarrassing me. Can't be helped. Meant every word. If anyone should have red cheeks, it's me, given the choices I've made. I'm sure you had your reasons. Of course. Still, it is a bit cowardly of me not to stand up to my family a bit more. Honestly, it's since getting to know you that I've started thinking along those lines. One day soon, I'll return to that house. Reception will be chilly at best. Still, it must be done. My house is full of low lowlifes. It also has my little bro who took over when I left. He's good people. 
Even with the difficulties in Leicester, our house is still going strong. That's his doing. That's why I've decided that it's time to talk to him about what can be done to help Count Ordelia. Repaying your perceived debt would be nice, sure. But it sounds like you intend to foist your responsibility onto your little brother. Ah, but the two aren't related. This is just the right thing to do. I'm still pondering how best to fulfill my vow. Uh-huh. Well, you don't believe me, do you, little lady? Just what exactly are you planning on in terms of this repayment? After your family relinquishes their noble titles, I'll support them so that you can all live in peace. Even though you're a lowlife? That may be true, and it is, but consider this. I've seen life from both sides, as a noble and a vagabond. When their situation changes, they'll face new challenges. I'm the perfect guy to help them through. You're irresponsible and unreliable, but clearly, you're not a bad person, and your support would be most appreciated. Just so you're aware, however, we have no means with which to pay you, so, are you sure you're still willing to follow through with this? I wasn't planning on doing this for a payout, but if you really insisted on a thank you gift, well, you could always accept me into your family. Then paying me wouldn't be a consideration. Excuse me? Just what are you insinuating? Don't think too hard about it just yet. I still have lots of debts to pay and affairs to settle. In the meantime, let's just stick close together, yeah? and spot me some gold, will ya? Slow down, Balti. You can't be asking for money without so much as a hello. You're kidding, right? Kidding, yeah. Thing is, I was deadly serious. I don't joke about matters of gold. Ugh, your request is denied. You didn't used to be like this, you know. I get the feeling you don't mean anything good by that. But come on, I'm the same as I ever was. No, you used to be dependable. Like that time in the woods near Fultland's throat, you remember? Thinking, thinking, are you sure that was me? Yes. Uh, I had told Holst I wanted to go on a walk in the forest. <laughs> Holst never could tell you no. Hmm, <laughs> few can. Anyway, when the three of us got there, a horde of monsters appeared. I started wailing. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Then what happened? My brother started hitting one of the beasts with a wooden sword. You hoisted me over your shoulder. Holes told you to get me to safety even if it killed you. So you ran the whole way from the forest to the estate with me on your back. Ah, I remember it now. Toughest run of my life. I was so exhausted I threw up about a month's worth of lunches afterward. And then you turned right around and started running back. You said, oh, I've got to save Holst. A good thing, too. Holst was moments from winding up in that thing's stomach. Had to slam into it, then Holst and I kept punching till the deed was done. Truly a fight to remember. It was impressive, especially considering you were just teenagers. When you came back, you were just bruised boys in tattered clothes. But to me, you look like heroes. And now, here you are, a scrounger who can hardly open his mouth without nagging me for money. What happened to that brave little boy who saved me from a monster? Wow, way to shame a guy. I feel awful. But I still need gold. Can't live without it in this cruel world. Oh, come on. We both know that when you have money, you drink or gamble it all away. But... I suppose I could ask my brother to help pay off your debts, get you back on your feet. Don't you dare speak to Holst about this. He's a close friend. I hate to ruin what we have by borrowing gold. Oh, but you have no qualms about using his little sister? Figured I'd be an easy mark, is that it? Unbelievable. That could have gone better. Big guy! 
I'm fragile, you know. Stand back, Hilda. I've got this. Whew. Thanks for the help, Balti. Are you okay? What, this? It's nothing. Oh! Ouch. You didn't have to do that, you know. I didn't ask you to get yourself beaten up. If I thought I might have to break a sweat, I'd have gotten out of there myself. I know, I know, but I can't help but worry when I see you in a tight spot. Ols told me to keep an eye on you and all. It's the least I can do. Huh. I didn't realize you were still in touch with my brother. No, this was ages ago. He told me if anything happened to him, it was up to me to look after you. What could possibly happen to Holst? He's indestructible. True, but what would he think if I let you get hurt when I could have saved you? Not on my watch, pal. <laughs> Good point. He'd kill you. It's a real concern. I may be the renowned king of grappling, but I still wouldn't want to take on Holst. <laughs> He'd tear you to pieces. But if you did get killed trying to protect me, Holst would be crushed. Not as crushed as if something happened to me, but still, he'd be broken up about it. Maybe so. But in that case, at least he wouldn't think I'd messed up. As much as I believe in Holst, he also believes in me. Because of that, I won't ever let him down. And on that note, even if you think I'm in over my head, don't worry about it. I'd like for you to believe in me too. I can't stop worrying about you on command. That's not how worrying works. <laughs> Fair. But I do what I do because I want to. If it lands me beneath the dirt sooner than later, well, save your tears for my funeral. Ugh, I hate when people talk about death like it's no big deal. <sighs> Try to keep your stupid heart beating, alright? Training at this hour? How unexpectedly diligent of you. Ah, Hilda! How are things? Anything of note to report? Um, no? I'm not sure what you mean. Oh, I don't know. You haven't been approached by any lovelorn goons lately, have you? Hmm, now that you mention it, it's been a few days since any guys have flirted with me. Fantastic! They got the hint. Whoa, whoa, wait a second. Are you pulling some weird prank on me? Of course not. I'm just doing my best to keep my promise to Holst. That's all. Oh, not this again. That was ages ago. I'm sure my brother's forgotten all about it. Dead wrong, pal. I actually had the chance to see him recently, and he had a new request for me. What? He told you to get rid of any guys who show interest in me so that I stay his innocent little sister forever? That sounds more like Sedith than Holst, don't you think? Hmm, fair point. What was the request? Guys here have the gall to consider you a potential bride. It's my job to test them, see if they're worthy. I don't like where this is going. Since Holst isn't here to do the honors, I've spread the word that nobody is fit to marry you unless they can defeat the great king of grappling in a fight. What? That's exactly the same as getting rid of them! How so? It only eliminates the guys who are dumb enough to take up the challenge. No one is that dumb. No one around here thinks they can beat the stupendous king of grappling or whatever. That's why I leveled the playing field by allowing sneak attacks. Plenty have already tried their luck. One guy actually tried to strangle me in my sleep. Wow, a sleep strangler. He sounds like husband material. And that's why I've been training so much. Can't let you end up with some weakling after all. This is madness. If you keep getting stronger, there won't be anyone who fits the bill. True. You could spend your whole life searching and never find a match for Balthus the Great. The only people who stand a chance are Holst. And me. <laughs> to prove that you're worthy of my hand in marriage, you're going to fight yourself? I always knew I was my own worst enemy. One day I'll finally meet my equal in battle. Me. <laughs> 
So you're going to punch yourself out? Is that your idea of a romantic gesture? When that fateful day arrives, Hilda, I want you to know that I intend to keep my word. Huh. A girl could do worse, I suppose. The Myrmidon. Ha! Suit yourself. My gut says the odds are in favor of that mercenary. He's clearly a seasoned fu- Gah! Right when I open my big mouth, he goes and loses on me. <laughs> I win. Again. Had enough, Balthus. Damn you, you've won every round. The fights are rigged. Admit it, it's the only explanation. <laughs> of course they aren't. It's not like we're playing for money. We wouldn't be so foolish now, would we? You're the one who started this silly game anyway. So out with it. You lost? Spill the beans. It has to be juicy, though. Something that leaves you a bit... vulnerable. Why did I agree to these stakes? If this losing streak keeps up, you'll know an awful lot about me, pal. Let's see... Okay, got one. A few years back, I went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the bird beast in some ancient ruins. <sighs> this one again? You obliterated the ruins, and the lord who found out put a price on your head. You've told me a thousand times before. Good story bears repeating, yeah? But it seems I'm all out of anecdotes. How about I take my shirt off and let you look your fill instead? Two full minutes. Oh, come now. As if I'm interested in seeing your sweaty torso for the umpteenth time. If you're fresh out of stories, then I have a question for you. About your crest. Hit me where it hurts, why don't you? Is this your idea of negotiation? Perhaps. Or perhaps I'm simply curious. Tell me, how did you come across such a rarity? To my knowledge, nobody within House Albrecht has your crest. Why well, ask what you already know? You've got your own rare crest, so I'm sure you figured it out. Unless you think the goddess gave us these things while we slept. <laughs> Wait, do you? Hey now, I'm the one winning the bets, so I'm the one asking the questions. Got me there. Hey look, the next round's starting. My luck's about to turn around, I can feel it. Let's do you a favor and call it good here. No need to embarrass yourself further, friend. Even if I'm terrible at this, I can't walk away during a losing streak. I have my own sort of honor. <sighs> All right, Balthus. Check out those two Myrmidons. The two who were eating together earlier? Huh. Who knew they were opponents? I kind of figured. Thoughts? Well, that one's pretty beefy. Quick on his feet, too. Clearly a seasoned fighter. His opponent's okay, but a bit showy. Compensating for being newer at this would be my guess. Mm-hmm. So, make your choice. Thank you. First guy, no doubt about it. You can see from a mile away that... He lost! Well, that was quick. Not everything is as it appears. For example, were you and I to go at it, perhaps you'd bet in favor of yourself over me. And you'd lose. I'd use my cunning to ensure my victory, by any means necessary. Maybe I'd slip something into your food, level the playing field. You see now? Point taken. I'll keep that in mind for this next one. Gotta put that great advice to the test, right? <laughs> Ever the bold one. It seems we must continue these games until you finally concede. This is pointless! My head's about to split in two! Wow, Balthus, what's with you, friend? Never seen you so deep in thought. Next thing I know, Snow will be dumping out of the sky here in Abyss. <laughs> Shut your trap! I'm driving myself crazy over here. I've got a lot on my mind, okay? Like? Ah, fine. You know how I never got any stories out of you the other day? How could I forget? 
I won every last round. It was clear that both Lady Luck and the Goddess herself had given up on you. Your powers of deliberation weren't any help either. You caught me off my stride, got it? But it was clear I'd never win a story from you, so I went digging. Uh-huh. I was especially curious about that crest of yours, so I went rifling around for a lead. I got to thinking. You must have time on your hands if you're spending it thinking. Well, let's hear it. There's a story they tell where my mom grew up. Long ago, the village got in a squabble with some folks looking to conquer the place. A village elder gave some holy red stuff to their wounded soldiers. Some kind of liquid, who knows. After she did that, some of them made a complete recovery, against all odds. The rest of them were changed, but not for the better. They have been vanished before long. And then? Crests suddenly manifested for the ones who survived. They weren't inherited or gifted by the goddess. It's a real thinker, yeah? A real thinker. Near death, but survived, despite all odds. Wait, the elder whom my mom saved, could he have used something similar? No, it can't be. Yet, something here is unsettling in its familiarity. Hit the mark, did I? I don't know whether you hit the mark or missed it entirely, but your story was a cute one, regardless. The truth is, I've been trying to sort out who I am, and, well, I haven't been successful in it. I don't even know whether my mother is truly my birth mother, or why it is I have this crest. At this point, I have nothing but speculations. Maybe I'll sink into my grave without ever knowing the truth. Lots of things in life don't have an answer. Just pick the story you like best and run with it. That's better than finding out a truth you can't live with. You can really mess your head up like that. <sighs> Damn it, you're right. To think that something so trivial could bother someone like me. Look who's a quick learner. Thinking too much will sap your energy, pal. I avoid it whenever possible. In fact, it's been ages since I last thought so deeply. My head is really hurting now. <laughs> but if that old legend is true, what was that holy red stuff? What happened to the vanished soldiers? Once I start thinking about all that, I keep going round and round in my head. And then it's dawn. And then it's nightfall. And then it's dawn again! And... Uh... Uh, hey, Balthus? <gasps> Let me at him! Oh. Oh. Not a fight, then. Uh, that's what I get for overusing the old noggin. You damn fool. Hey, take this. Hmm? That smell, that sound, this is gold. A sizable stash of precious gold. What gives? Don't tell me you got your mitts on the church's vault. You fool. It's simply a reward. Nothing to get in a tizzy over. No way I can accept this, pal. Trust me, I haven't done anything to deserve it. Just shut up and take it. Call it your fee for providing me with information. What you told me. The tale from your mother's homeland? It really helped me. Anyway, if you don't actually need it, I'm sure you'll find a use for it. Maybe take your mom out for a night on the town? Looks like you're insisting then. Fine, I'll use it to buy her some good grub. But I thought you didn't actually find any answers in my little tale. Not quite, but it helped me in other ways. I've stopped vexing myself over unimportant details, like who I am or who I think I might be. That's all fine and good, but is it really worth its weight in gold? This is coin we're talking about. Look, do you want it or not? Is there something else you prefer? <sighs> wow, that was one hell of a sigh. Look, you're better than me at thinking and betting, but right in this moment, you're the fool. You. Do I like gold? Yes. Do I want it? Need it? Yes and yes. While we're at it, I like brawling. Women too. But there's something that I care about even more than gold, fighting, and women. 
Any ideas? Oh, this is tough. Mm. Let me guess. Hopelessly losing every bet you place? A good drink? You really think highly of me, don't you? Dead wrong. It's having a bash bro. A friend to fight with and fight for. Seems I was a bit off base there. I guess to you, everyone is either an underling or a business associate. But with a bash bro, there's no such thing as an overdue loan. No hierarchies or other nonsense. It's someone to trust, both in and out of battle. Someone to share life's ups and downs with. I see. No need to reward a bash bro, I suppose. That's the ticket. I know you were born into a world of trickery and exploitation, but you don't have to live like that anymore. Now you've got me! I'm not accustomed to talks like this, I must admit. Hmm. How can I frame this? Nobody even knows my real name. Are you actually comfortable confessing such a warmth towards someone so... cold? Clearly. No matter who you are or what you've done, I care about you. That won't ever change. <laughs> now that is fresh. I told you my feelings and you laughed. <laughs> You're one of a kind, pal. I'm sorry. I've got to admit, I thought I'd heard it all. But you've managed to surprise me. It's the first time anyone has ever said something so sincere without trying to get something out of me. I could try to say it again with more swagger, if that helps. Nah, no need. Bash Bros has a nice ring to it. From here forward, we are forever Bash Bros, friend. I've got your back, pal. Oh, Constance! Hey, um... Sure is sunny out. Huh? Yeah. Good day to you, Balthus. You seem to be enjoying your freedom. I must admit, I'm jealous. Right, uh, so yeah. The weather's nice. <laughs> I gotta be going now. Of course. What profit is there for one so exalted to spend time alongside one so common as me? Worry not. You needn't suffer me any longer. I shall see myself off. Come on, don't be like that. You know I get uncomfortable at times like this. I'm trying. Really. You matter, so stick around, yeah? Let's chat. It'll be great. You needn't take pity on me out of the sense of obligation that your status demands. For you, the nobility that you abandoned was a shackle on your true self, which is now freed. No need to converse with me any longer, putting yourself out on my behalf. What a mouthful you just unloaded on me. Not sure what you mean by that nobility stuff, though. Sure, I walked out on leading a noble house, but how do you imagine that's related to this chat of ours? I already admitted I'm no good with stuff like this, but I don't think I'm putting myself out or whatever. My apologies. The misunderstanding was entirely my own. As I suspected from the start, I am unfit to serve as your conversational partner. Ah, that's enough! Stop talking that way and twisting everything I say! Just spit it out and tell me something real. You hate my guts, yeah? Huh, this is novel. But doesn't this scene usually play out in reverse? Oh, uh, sorry. Guess I raised my voice there. But what do you mean by that reverse thing? Well, it's usually her yelling at you while you try to deflect. It's rare to see you lose your cool while she stays so calm. But different people get along differently on different days, I suppose. Anyhow, I'll let you get back to it. Ouch, he has a point. I lost myself for a moment there. To think that I have ever raised my voice at you. He seems to think we're real pals. Honestly, whether rain or shine, I don't think a day's gone by without you treating me poorly. Oh, what a thing to say. I could never go so far as to insult one with your lineage. Ha, <laughs> you're a funny one, pal. A real hoot. The idea that I could be amusing is funnier than any jest I may have uttered. <laughs>
What's with all the ruckus, I wonder? Wait, isn't that Constance? This has nothing to do with you, so keep your nose out of it. Yeah, none of your business. Unless you're his girlfriend, that is. <laughs> you ascribe too much to me, sirs. I haven't the qualities that Balthus seeks in a partner. So prissy. Are you Balthus's lady or not? Softly, please, softly. Such accusations are slander upon his good name. I have no place in the heart of one so freewheeling and glad. Were there a list of suitable partners? I should deem myself to be at the tail end of it. If you're not his gal, then step off! We're trying to spread some juicy Balthus gossip over here. You're nothing to him, so why ruin our fun? Because what you say is unthinkable. If you attempt to spread lies that strain credulity so, it will be your own reputations that suffer. Your reputations, or your bones, should Balthus ever learn of this deception. A hairline break may heal, but the powder he makes of a man's skeleton is another matter. And that's to say nothing of the jelly that will be left of your organs. Are you not concerned? He'll do what? Oh, um, guess spreading lies is a bad idea. Good thing I'd never do such a thing. Uh, right. This is all a big misunderstanding. <laughs> Thanks for the heads up. We're just gonna back away now. Um, have a nice day! Whew. <sighs> I've saved lives today. They didn't deserve the fury that he would unleash. But then, few would. Hmm? Is that not Balthus standing there? Hey, why'd you say all that scary stuff about me? Don't tell people things like that. They're not the ones ruining my reputation. You are. Oh, how short-sighted of me. I believed myself to be acting in your interest, but I see now that I was mistaken. I shall regret this indiscretion until my dying day. <sighs> Clearly, I need to take anything that falls out of your mouth with a grain of salt. Maybe the whole shaker. Still, you did stop those two from talking about me. Regardless of how you did it, I guess I should be grateful, so... Thanks. This magnanimity is in keeping with the wondrous man I know you to be. So open. So accepting. You are a paragon for others to follow. She... Maybe it's better when she treats me poorly. Being praised like that is downright uncomfortable. You mustn't draw the enemy in, so... Pray do not sacrifice yourself on my account. Enough of that. Just watch my back like we planned. A thousand pardons, then. Ooh, it's been a while since we had such a close fight. How you holding up? You didn't seem like your heart was really in it this time. I had some difficulty. Knowing the torment our enemy was going through. Bad enough to fall in combat, but to be felled by one so base as I. Uh, if they regret anything, it's that you're worried about their humiliating defeat. Ego burn right there. You know, it wasn't so bad fighting at your side. You make a pretty good team, you and I. It is because you have the courage to face your enemies head on, leaving your flanks unguarded and the generosity to allow less skilled fighters the glory of dispatching foes who take the bait. Every aspect of your tactics is a reflection of your incomparable virtue. You have a way of understanding a situation, but also twisting it all up in your head. Impressive, really. The unrivaled king of grappling himself, that'd be me, trusted you enough to watch his back. Can't you just be proud and leave it at that? The nickname is a difficult one to respect, though the man inhabiting it is more than worthy. Hmm. If what I have said today has offended, which I would not doubt, then accept my humblest apologies. <laughs> you really are something else, you know that? 
I like your style, pal. I could see us teaming up as mercenaries and wandering from battlefield to battlefield. Admit it, that would be a grand old time, don't you think? It would depend on the circumstances. Might I impose on you to come with me? Right, there's always... Wait, what? Okay, we're here. Care to explain? Must you make a mockery of everything? I have my own dream to pursue, not this twaddle. You assume I'd abandon the restoration of House Nouvelle to... To become a vagrant? Are you mad? Even among your fabled transgressions, this goes beyond the pale. Definitely a fair weather friend, that one. I scampered up to me, hopped in my lap, and scarfed it all down in one bite. <laughs> that sounds terrible. I was looking forward to that sandwich all morning, and then she scurried off like nothing happened. <sighs> ah. hmm. All right then. What do you feel like doing today? Why do you sigh like that? It's not a problem, is it? I could tell you were holding back a real monstrous sigh yourself. Figured I'd get one out for the both of us. Felt great. Oh, I see. Must be nice, sighing whenever you feel so inclined. Oh, why not try taking a deep breath whenever you feel a sigh coming on? Trick yourself out of it. I tried that once. It went okay at first, but then I had to exhale. Right. Guess they're too similar for that to work. Does that mean yawning is a no-go too? I'm pretty bored right now, so maybe we'll find out. But I don't yawn very often, to be honest. Because you sleep when the sun goes down and wake when it rises, yeah? Yep, that's been my routine for a while now. It's easier than contending with a full day of boring stuff. Come on, everything has its quirks. I don't think I'd call anything in this wild world boring. Really? Because you don't seem to take much interest in your own future. <laughs> that's not very nice, is it? We really aren't all that different, you know. I'd wager you haven't given too much thought to tomorrow either. Quiet. Don't pretend you can see through me. This pointless chatter has made me even hungrier than I already was. I'm off to the dining hall. Just wanted the gal to relax for a change. <sighs> She's as prickly as ever. What's all this? Ha! <laughs> I knew it! Did you look at that? It's gold! Some poor sap just left it here for me to find. <laughs> I'll be taking this then. You think the whole world is your collection jar? Unbelievable. Ah! Um, sorry about that. Look, I feel awful. Please don't twist up your face like you're suppressing a disappointed sigh. How about I use this gold to buy you something nice? A sweet treat, perhaps? Yeah? I don't eat contraband sweets. Are you trying to get me locked up again? Give back the money or don't. It's none of my business. Either way, keep me out of it. As you wish, milady. Straight to the fun fund it goes. Drinks don't buy themselves, unfortunately. That might make for a fun night or two. But what about all the money you owe? If you're going to keep this, you should apply it to your debts before a bounty hunter gets a hold of you. This gold wouldn't even make a dent, it's chump change. Better to drink it than waste it. In any case, when I'm dead, I'm dead. When that happens, none of this will matter anymore. I'm not gonna worry about what I can't control. I've got better uses for this gold in the meantime. I don't understand how you can be so reckless. It's as though you want to get killed. Meanwhile, if I lose control for even a moment, Monsters will eat me for dinner. Hearing you say that so casually feels like a bad omen. It's unsettling, that's for sure. Sorry, is that too morbid for you? You just told me when I'm dead, I'm dead. And it's true. For me, not for you. And why is that? 
because all of this mess I'm drowning in is my own fault. Every bit of it. You can't say the same. I'm in trouble because I borrowed, drank, and fought too much. All my own choices. That means it's on me to take responsibility and accept the inevitable outcome. So, since it's in my control to keep the size at bay, I don't get to relax ever? Uh, not quite. I'm saying that it isn't your fault, so you shouldn't have to bear that burden alone. That's a nice sentiment, but people are hardly lining up to share this burden with me. Talk is cheap. Everyone knows it's all over the instant I sigh. Huh. I have a habit of not saying the right thing to her. Not much I can do about... Hey! It's more gold! Go ahead and join your buddies in my pocket, pal! Why did you bring me here? It's so isolated. That would be the point. Yikes. See you around, B. Uh, hang on a second. Out here, in a place like this, you should be free to sigh. Yeah? What do you mean by that? I just thought it would do you well to cut loose and sigh to your heart's content. Really? You found a nice quiet place where you could annoy me without putting bystanders at risk? Ah, why does this always happen? It, that's not what I meant. This is me doing something nice for you. You said before that you can't ever relax because you're worried about endangering others. A lot's been going on recently, so let her rip already. Sigh until you can sigh no more. That's nice of you. A chance to relax and sigh as I please. Sounds good. But what do we do about the monsters? What do you think? A monster shows up, I punch it in the nose. Done deal. By yourself? I'm never alone, pal. These two fists are always by my side. And they never let me down. Oh, right. It doesn't have to be here if you have performance anxiety, but anytime you accidentally call a monster, just holler and I'll punch it to next Tuesday. In fact, maybe it's best if you just stick by my side from now on. Do that and you're free to sigh whenever the urge strikes. Why would I have to stay by your side? Not a lot of people in this world can knock out a beast without breaking a sweat. I'm one of them. And since I'm always on the run from bounty hunters, I'm an exceptionally light sleeper. You expect me to sleep by your side too? Ooh, this may be my best idea yet. If I'm always with a monster summoner, fewer people will come after my bounty. <laughs> this is brilliant. Ah, <sighs> never change, B. You're so predictable. <sighs> All right, have fun. Have fun? That's an odd thing to do! <laughs> Monsters, they're everywhere. <laughs> this is gonna be a blast. It's hard not to like that dummy. <laughs> <laughs> 